Now, at least about 370 people have been arrested as protests in Ecuador have intensified. Now, demonstrations against President Lenin Moreno's decision to scrap a fuel subsidy continue to turn violent. Now, protesters and the police clashed as the demonstrators disrupted transport services and also barricaded streets. President Moreno's decision led to the largest civil unrest in the politically volatile South American nation. The Moreno has introduced strict fiscal measures in the oil-producing country to comply with a $4.2 billion IMF deal. And also what is interesting is that the indigenous people in the transport unions also continue to protest. They vowed to overturn the austerity measures led by President Moreno. Meanwhile, Marino, whose centrist government has succeeded as socialist regime, has refused to bow down to the protesters. Con los delincuentes no no dialogamos con aquellos que antes robaban el erario público, que antes robaban el presupuesto del Estado y que ahora se dedican a robar tiendas hasta en eso apartado de capital. No vamos a dialogar. La medida es ser firme. No voy a cambiar de opinión, que quede absolutamente claro. No voy a cambiar de opinión. Dialogar, sí, para encontrar paliativos, vuelvo a recalcar, incentivos para aquellos que puedan ser, haber sido afectados por la herida. Me alegro mucho la respuesta inmensa, mayoritaria, del pueblo ecuatoriano para apoyar una decisión valiente del gobierno nacional. And also, Marino's approval ratings have drastically come down amidst the protests, but his political position appears pretty firm, given the support that he's got from the business elite, the military loyalty, and also the lack of a strong opposition. Now, in a major setback to President Donald Trump, the U.S. House of Representatives has issued a subpoena for the White House documents related to the president's phone call with Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. The chairman of three House committees were forced to issue the order after the White House had refused to comply with a request that had been made on the 9th of September for releasing the documents. Now, the White House has time until the 18th of this month to produce the information as to what transpired in that now infamous call between President Trump and President Vladimir Zelensky. Now, the Trump administration remains very defiant. White House spokeswoman Stephanie Grisham has said that the subpoena changes nothing and is only a waste of taxpayers' time and money. Now, in strictly legal terms, Trump can continue to avoid the impeachment probe until the Democrat-controlled House holds a full vote formally approving the inquiry. And that has not happened so far. And also, U.S. Senator Mitt Romney has been a pretty vocal critique of Trump's phone call with Zelensky. Trump has, of course, hit back at Romney for his stand and has turned the narrative on its head. Now, the president has called for Romney's impeachment, actually, and has said that the people of Utah had made a mistake by voting for his fellow Republican. It's also interesting to note here that the U.S. senators cannot be impeached and Utah does not have a provision for recalling its senator. Now, Trump has said that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff had no idea that he would release the transcripts of his phone call with Zelensky. While alleging Nancy Pelosi and Schiff of lying to the American people, Trump has said that both of them have been caught and all that has been happening is a fraud against the people of America. Well, the Democrats have, of course, defended the impeachment inquiry, which focuses on this one telephone call that took place between President Trump and his Ukrainian counterpart. They've also accused President Trump of an incitement to violence against the national security whistleblower and have urged that he and his administration should, could potentially intimidate the witnesses in case of an impeachment inquiry. Meanwhile, the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has denounced the harassment of the U.S. State Department in the Trump impeachment probe during a diplomatic visit to Greece. And this comes after the State Department has issued Pompeo a congressional subpoena to produce the Ukraine-related documents. The Pompeo has also hit out at Trump's impeachment inquiry and has, call it, and has called it a pretty silly game. I think they want to know about the relationship with America and Greece. I'm convinced of that. All right? This is, this is, this is, the, this is, this is, what's, this is what's wrong. When the world doesn't focus on the things that are right, the things that matter, the things that impact real people's lives, and instead you get caught up in some silly gotcha game, 
You see, that's not, that's not healthy. That doesn't help democracies flourish. It doesn't help grow economies. What it does is it destroys people's belief it, that the, the people who have this charge, right, as a reporter, as a journalist, the people who have this charge uh, aren't really focused on the things that matter to people.